thanks for doing this. You're terrific. <laughs> well, yeah. thank so, you for videotaping. Oh, you. you betcha. You betcha. Well, let me ask you just a, sort of a general question, Betty. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work years and, and what you did uh, while, uh, while you were working. Well, it was being a teacher. Yeah. Uh, starting out in um, two different school systems where I had the entire music program, kindergarten through 12, uh, and also the band. Uh, and came to Cedar Rapids uh, at to McKinley when it was a junior and senior high school. But I had the eighth and ninth grade music there. Went from there to Cole College as professor of music ed, and then came back into the Cedar Rapids system, uh, teaching at Polk Elementary and then over at Cleveland. And finally at uh, New Jackson, which is no more now, uh, in combination with being the music consultant for the Grant Wood Area Education Agency. So that my a career. What did you enjoy doing outside of your work life? Well, it just so happens that music is also my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> and of course it'd be going to concerts. But early on I also decided if I wanted to <clears throat> Uh, not be a fishing widow, I better learn how to do it so that I could go fishing with my husband, which I did for many years. I really didn't consider it a hobby, but it was something that we could do together that he enjoyed. Oh, that's terrific. And so did you travel places to do oh, that? Oh, we did a lot of traveling. Did you? Uh, we couldn't have afforded it if we didn't camp because we had two boys, and uh, at that time, uh, well before he was tied up as a principal with more summer work, uh, we, would, we would have the summer, and what we would do, we would figure out where we would like to vacation, and then either one or, or both of us would go to school. And so, when we had decided we wanted to see Yellowstone, my husband enrolled at uh, uh, Michi or Montana State at Bozeman, Montana. And uh, the first time, then we went there another time, and uh, he taught during the summer, and I, and I went to school with the boys. But, but we camped all over the U.S. and into Canada, Alaska. Went to Alaska a year after the big earthquake up there.
a little history uh, in Greenwood and what you recall, well, like, there, kind of the highlights. There's a couple of things that um, I remember for both Chuck and I. Bernie Bowman, who was the CEO at the time, uh, he asked us to write a Methwick song. So it was approximately 1994, and Chuck wrote the poem, one verse, and I, I wrote the music. And that was the start of the Methwick song. About a year later, a lady over, well no, several years later, after Deer Ridge was built, building, a lady started a chorus over at Deer Ridge, and she called Chuck and said, could you write a second verse to the Methwick song so it's longer because I want the chorus to sing it and it's short and mm -hmm. we could have a longer song. So he wrote a second verse. <laughs> That's how the Methwick song ended up with two verses. The original manuscript with music and uh, words is uh, framed and on a chest of drawers outside of the manor dining room. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know it because yeah. they don't stop to look to see what's in that frame. Oh, be darned. Oh, be darned. <laughs> well, uh, But there was that. Okay, Then there was ahead. another time. Yeah. Because Chuck was a hunter. Uh, duck, squirrel, uh, pheasant, oh. turkey, bear, deer, uh, you name it. He came back after we'd moved here, uh, several years later, from Tennessee. He'd been on a wild boar hunt. And he brought back this huge boar and said he would donate the boar to uh, Methwick to roast. So the activities director and somebody else decided they'd have a big Hawaiian all-campus feast. <laughs> and they started out with this big boar on a spit that was turning uh, outside what is now Grandin a Courtyard. It wasn't that then. And they had this wild boar cooking all day. And late afternoon was when the big Hawaiian feast was, when people came up and <laughs> <laughs> had that. but. Anyhow, though, those are two occasions because uh, we, when we moved in here, Chuck said, uh, oh good, now we don't have to shovel anymore, I don't have to <laughs> mow the lawn and rake the leaves, because we had a small house on the Mississippi River. Oh. And uh, uh, now, he could go up there most any time, or I could go up with him. Uh, uh, that, that was interesting too. I ended up, I put a, I got an organ out of the attic of uh, uh, St. Matthew's School. Really? Actually, it was an attic in their church, and they bought a new organ, and they stored the old one, and I bought the old one and took it up there and had an organ to practice on. Oh, for heavens. Yeah, because yeah. that's the other thing. I've been a church organist or pianist or choir director all my life, too. Yeah. As I say, we gained our liberty when we moved here. That's wonderful. Yeah.
Does your music play a role in, in health and well-being? Uh, do you think? Probably only because it is a hobby, so, and I, so I'm doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Because the secret is also, you, you've got to eat well, properly, and uh, exercise, mm -hmm. and you have to keep busy. You have to be doing something. Because if you just sit around and do nothing, next thing you know, you can't do anything. Anything at all that you want to be sure to mention before we... Well, I do want to mention, my husband wrote a lot of poetry. Mm. He loved poetry. And he, do has, he does have one of his poems on display in the Second World War display in New Orleans. Oh, really? The big museum of oh. the World War II. And uh, it's the invasion of Iwo Jima, which he was in. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Because he saw the raising of the flag, both the first and the second. No kidding. He was uh, on the battleship uh, Missoula. Really? And went ashore with the 5th Division Marines at Iwo Jima. Yeah. Remarkable. 
So, and while he was in the nursing home in Charles City, I got all of his poetry together. I took up my typewriter and uh, for a couple of weeks, well, of course, I, that's another long story. But anyhow, while I was there with him, I was typing his poetry and had it made into a book. Wonderful. Uh, and a lot of people here at Greenwood got his, I had it printed up and, and so they had his book of poetry. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, and uh, he, he was a wonderful man in the community. Uh, I got to know him through the school of, district. And several, several of the teachers that were, uh, uh, were teachers for him mm -hmm. when he was a principal live here mm -hmm. uh, on the campus. Uh, mm -hmm. Two of them are over at uh, Deer, uh, Deer Ridge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but every so often I run into somebody, oh, yeah, uh, my children went to school. Mr. Debin was the principal. Mm -hmm. Or I run into people sure. all the time. Or I get letter, I got a letter for my 98th birthday from a student that I had at Polk School over 60 years ago. Really? Uh-huh. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. Well, the Devon uh, legacy in Cedar Rapids is deep. And uh, mm -hmm. I really appreciate your taking a few minutes to share your, a bit of your life.